Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 14. This tutorial we're going to shift away from what we've created here and start looking at creating a slightly more advanced hyper casual game. So we want to implement some kind of endless runner um, kind of thing to it and we're going to be basically designing that from somewhat from scratch using a little bit of code we've already written. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So as I said, we're going to look at creating a slightly more advanced hyper casual game and I'd like this one to be an endless runner style with a maybe a top down kind of view. So we're going to do this in a completely new scene. So we're technically starting from scratch with a scene. So file and new scene and yeah we want to save uh, that obviously if you've already saved it perfect so what do we do here well I want to have the idea of three tracks and we have a player which is either in the middle the left or the right and they run along it trying to avoid randomly generated blocks ahead of us and we're going to bring in some textures for that as well because we want to make it look a little different I guess than our previous incarnation of a hyper casual game so let's bring in some textures to start off with so let's drag and drop these four textures that you can get from the website if you head over there downloads and assets hyper casual game tutorial number 14 if you followed any of my other tutorials you may recognize these textures themselves so how do we use these how do we put these onto something well let's create a new game object so 3d object cube I'm going to zero out the position and double click on it in the hierarchy so we can see it perfectly. So now let's drag and drop this floor 0, 0, 0 texture onto the cube. Now it's just flat, it's plain, it's simple. Let's give it a bit of rigidity. Let's give it a bit of bumpiness depending on how the lighting is. So we're going to create something called a normal map. So if we go to our floor, hold control, press D, we'll be able to duplicate that. And although it's renamed as floor 004, I want to just rename it back to 000 underscore n. The n is just uh, an abbreviation for normal map. So make sure we have that clicked. And over here in the inspector panel, let's change it from default to normal map. And then you can, if you want to, click grayscale. I'll quickly show you what this is going to look like with and without grayscale, but we don't really need to do much more than this. There's, there's no point going too in depth with some of this stuff. So for now let's click apply and then let's click on the cube itself and down here we can click the little arrow and see all of this for the material. So let's drag and drop that floor 000n onto the normal map and you'll see it changes ever so slightly. So it's got a bit more to it now and if we look around we can see it does appear to be a bit shiny. So let's change the source to albedo and let's change the metallic to full and you can see just how that is affecting it now. So having this normal map really does affect what the material can look like. Now the key thing to this is changing it to grayscale and by default it's 0.25 but we'll keep it as that default for now and we'll press apply and you can see just how that changes. So it's got in this case because it's a very small texture it is a bit blocky kind of like Minecrafty. So I kind of want to stick with that because I like how that looks. But that doesn't mean to say that I can't carry on playing around with the actual uh, material itself. Could change the smoothness, could change the metallic. Again, it's entirely up to you. You could also change the normal map here so we can increase it quite a lot and you can see what happens. It's up to you whether you want to have the normal map on there or whether you want to stick with what you have. So all of this is still going to be dictated by the light and I'm going to change our directional light color to brilliant white. You can play around with this with the rotation and you'll be able to see the impact it has on the object as we do it. See what I mean? As we move the light around we can see different areas have a different impact. And I'm going to have mine as a rotation of 75 on the X and let's play around with the Y. Mm. I guess we'll have that. Maybe, in fact, let's have it as zero. I'll just keep it as it is. And also we can change the intensity. Obviously very intense means it comes white. <laughs> no intensity means it's uh, completely black. So I'm going to keep it as it is. Now, the key thing to what we're going to do here is we're going to create, um, it's going to be seven different variations of what we could generate. 
And you'll see what I mean by that as we go through this tutorial. So I'm going to use this gray block as the floor. And I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to snap it out to there. So it's in line with this block. And then one more to there. So let's rename this to uh, floor left. Let's do the second one to floor middle. And finally, floor right. So this is going to be our ultimate singular track to run on. So every other section is going to be one of these to give us some breathing room so we don't randomly generate the ability to just run straight into a wall. So this one is going to be our master template that we use. So although they are three separate objects right now, we are going to combine them into a singular object um, shortly. So the idea is, like I say, I want to bring in um, seven different variations of this track to run on. And although this probably seems very simplistic and basic now, it will all make sense probably by next tutorial. So for now, what I'm going to do is floor middle and make sure we do select the middle one here. I'm going to right click and create empty. Make sure the position is 0, 0, 0. And then drag and drop that game object out of floor middle and place it below directional light. And we should see the position is 1, 0, 0. Now what we do is if we select floor left, middle and right and place that inside that game object, we're now able to move them as one singular object. And we did that with the, uh, the platforms in the last one. But this one now gives us the ability to, let's say, create a second one. So hold control, press D, create another one and another one and another one. Obviously, we don't want to do that right now because we only want the single one. So we're going to create seven different ledges, like I say. And this first one, the template, I'm going to call this ledge zero. So ledge zero. So now I'm going to keep that there. But we're going to get our camera in position because we're going to use this as basically where we start this endless runner sequence. So let's take our main camera and I'm going to zoom out. And I'm now going to bring it inward and I'm going to rotate it. That's how I'll bring it upwards first. And then I'm going to rotate on the X to look downward. So if we have it at 90, we're looking straight down can see straight down there. If we have it maybe say 75, it is still looking down. However, it's kind of looking ahead slightly. Same again, if we have the angle as 75, we're able to see exactly what it's doing. So for now, I'm going to have it as 90, pull it up just a little bit. And like I said, I want to have this as mainly top down, but I want you to have the ability to kind of see a little bit ahead as well. So I'm thinking we should probably have the rotation as 70. So now if we bring that to there, we'll be able to have a slight bit of visualization ahead of us. So the camera is now in the right place for us. And basically what we're going to end up doing is moving the camera along as it goes. So we'll be able to see. So realistically, all we need to do now is create our sections uh, for the actual ledges. <laughs> so if we take ledge zero, hold control press D to duplicate and bring it forward, I'm going to change this to ledge one. And what I want to do is I want to have, let's say, blue ledges on the left, red ledges in the middle, or blocks I should say, and green blocks on the right. So let's start creating those possible variants. So in ledge one, let's take the floor left, hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's bring that up and out. So now we can see that this particular game object is now four sections. So let's apply the left texture, which is going to be floor 01, which is the blue. And then let's apply that normal map over here. So there we have the blue. So that's our first one done. So let's duplicate that. And then let's create ledge two, which means that we're going to have the possibility of having a green one in, uh, sorry, a red one in the middle. So 
let's drag and drop that texture onto the object and then the normal map onto the material which is right there so the next one to make is going to be just the red on its own so let's take ledge 2 hold control press d let's change that to ledge 3 and at the moment they are all in the same place and it doesn't really matter too much right now because when we come to the random generation they will be put in the right place anyway so we can get rid of the blue one so now let's take ledge 3 hold control press d change it to ledge 4 and we need to basically get rid of the blue one in ledge 4 in fact let me i think it probably might be wise to start moving these out now i think about it it doesn't really matter where they are when they're done because they will be placed in the right place uh, but for now i do think yeah, we probably should move all of these out and ledge 4 so ledge 4 is also going to have the green block so hold control press d on that one let's move it to there and let's apply that green texture to the game object and then normal map as well and for the next one we want to take ledge 4 hold control press d bring it to there and get rid of the red block so we're getting there now we have 0 1 2 3 and 4 so we have five so we have six in total so there is only technically one more that we need to create and that is having a blue and a green one at any one time so let's take uh this one ledge five hold control press d and move it into place and let's also take this blue block here hold control press d and drag it out of that ledge into this one and then move it into position and you'll know you've got every possible scenario when you have three of each color like so so we know that these are all correct this is correct and this is correct there is no other possible combination of blocks to have so hopefully you guys can now see that we're going to end up randomly generating one of these sections at each possible um, ledge section along the way so if we take our main camera now and just move it along we can see how we're going to be running along there so let's say we're starting here we have the runner and it's going along and all these are going to endlessly generate um, oops shouldn't have done that okay so what do we do now now the big thing about all of this is I think going to be in the next tutorial because that's where we're going to start randomly generating and that is where the fun happens but for now what I would like to do is take uh, a copy of ledge zero hold control press d we're going to have a couple of static ledges to be our starting position so we're going to take ledge zero to six and we're going to move it way off camera over here so you'll never get to see these much like we did with the orbs these are always going to be static and we're going to instantiate these when we create the random generation for now we need to create these ledges so i'm just going to create just a couple here like i say these are going to be the starting blocks that we'll use and there we go so I guess it doesn't really matter what they are called in this instance. Um, you can call it ledge 0A, ledge 0B, I guess. I, I, I really honestly don't think the naming convention matters because these are always going to be static in this sense, so we don't need to change them too much. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at the random generation of everything we have, and it's going to start getting a lot of fun from there. So until that next tutorial, guys. Thank you very much for watching.